Hi, I'm Eric One. This is my show about my game, my Eric One's Room, and today I want to go through balancing puzzles. If you've not seen the show before, I'm going to be talking about all sorts of aspects of my game, from the programming, from the design, to the whatever else there is. The game is a point-and-click adventure game, and it's built in the style of an online escape room. And today, what I want to do is I want to go through a lot of the playtesting feedback. So it's very important for this type of game, for puzzle games, is to get playtesters, not necessarily for the technology, that's fairly stable at this point, but to see how the puzzles play through. Because puzzle games can often have random associations, what I want to check is, does everybody see the same thing I do? Do the players see it the same? Are there some things that can obviously be fixed? Or are there some things that are obviously wrong? And today I'm going to go through my latest play test from yesterday and just go through the various things. As simple as that. So, we're starting the game. This is the way the game starts. And I'm just going to consult my notes. I got my big book of notes, very quality paper here. And without revealing the names of the people, here's a page of like what type of stuff I write is um, I take notes for everything that they do along the time of the game, when they're there. And I also have a bunch of feedback at the end, a bunch of circles of what to do. Um, on the first page here, where the game starts, of course the music starts. The music itself was posing a problem in the game during the feedback. I couldn't tell how loud it was for the players, but it was coming really loud for me, but that may be because I had three people playing it all at once. In the new version, it's tuned down a lot quieter, and the final game it will have an option here to both turn it off and to adjust the volume. The last playtest had no issues on this screen. They scrolled up and down a bit. They read this. It took them a while to realize they could scroll, but I think this is partially because I think Chrome on Windows is hiding the scroll bar by default. I'll have to double check that to see if it goes away. Um, and so I use Firefox for most of the testing, but this also works in Chrome. Let me just quickly test that. Load up Chrome here. Open up Chrome. It's going to make the same sound, but it defaults it. So it shows it up here. So maybe it was in the Windows. I didn't see them. I only watched one of the players playing because I can't watch them all at once. So I watch one and then see what other issues there are. So let's close this here. So they had no problem in this screen. They got through it very quickly, and that's not an issue. If I didn't say it in advance, there's a lot of spoilers in the show. So if you want to play this game, perhaps don't watch all the shows because I'm going to go through all the bits of the spoilers and see what happens. So now I think I have um, OBS balanced a bit better since so music in the background is also a bit quieter. You should be able to hear me and talk now, but I'm going to turn it down just a little bit more again. Just to make sure I talk on top of it and it's in the background. But generally, while I develop, I end up muting it anyways, just because, you know, it's a decent song, but hearing it like a thousand times, it should be okay. And I have a comment from a side channel that sounds super weird. I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> I hope we sound okay. Let me check that comment for a second. This is the interactive show, so we can correct things, but I have no idea to see how I sound. What do you mean? Okay. <laughs> so let's go through it. So on this screen, they had some issues, but I don't want to go through this one first. It was mainly on the next screen here. Curious, when they played, they didn't see the arrows at first. And this is a type of false sensation. What happened is they did something, and then they saw the arrow. So they thought the arrow came up because they did something. But the arrows are always there. And this type of association, it's... You don't want that, but that one's actually really hard to avoid because you kind of have to look around. But if I can avoid it in other places, I will, and it will come up in other places. The first one they had that was obvious was you have to set these lights in a certain color, this color pattern. Um, and the colors happen to line up with these flags here. It doesn't matter that this guy gives a very obvious clue about what order that should be. These flags here have a very particular color. And I'm trying to think, I can put this close to my mouth just so it's a little bit stronger. There you go. Hopefully it changes the sound of it the better. So they looked at this and they said, oh well it's red, yellow, red, yellow. And then don't know, I'm from this side, it's red, yellow, red, yellow, red. 
but what do we do about these top three? Now, this was absolutely not intended. It has nothing to do with these flags here. And oh, I got a comment from D Live because I've never broadcast before. Check my welcome. Oh, I'll assume okay. So what I want to do is that these flags are probably red and yellow because of the mustard and ketchup here. But they don't have to be, and it's misdirecting people and the things at the top because they line up with the color of the lights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of the flags, or I could change the color of the lights. If I make the lights a different color, not orange, but I like the way they light up. These flags are also nice, but let's find a different color. So let's launch Inkscape and change the color of that. Okay, where am I? Carnival Static. And this is the hot dog stand. You can see in the editing view. Where am I? Where am I? In the editing view, all the lights end up black. I start that way and I apply a style and then change the color. So these ones down here, I mean, I think I could leave them red or I could simply change the color. I could, for example, make these ones pink instead. It may not be much of a difference, but maybe it's just enough so the users don't make that false association. So make those ones pink. So now we have pink flags. It draws out a bit more. And take these yellow ones, and I'm going to tone down the yellow ones now and maybe make them the color of maybe this board here. So now we have a different color here. And hopefully this is enough to disassociate people from thinking, oh, these flags have to do with the color of the lights because the lights have those colors, these colors. Of course, that orange is still similar to that. I can actually save this right away. I have too many windows, it's hard to say. I could save this right away, and this is a live update. So if I go back here and reload it, if I go back here and reload it, it really <laughs> it's supposed to load the new one. Um, so this has to do with my thing here. Processing SVG hot dog stand. It should have, oh, I know why, because it won't reload it unless I'm in debug mode. And so I'm going to load this down here. I'll just get that out, and then I'll reload it here. And so now you see these new flags. So these colors are actually, unfortunately, still the same. The pink is no longer the same, so let's go and do something else here. Okay. Um, so I have some comments that my voice is off. I'm going to have to live with that for now, because I have no way to fix my voice during this, because I can't hear myself, and I haven't done a studio check on that. And I'm doing it all the same. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change these colors again. I have these ones. Let's pick a different color. What color is good for those? Um, something very different. You know, I could just make them white. That's strange. This is really weird. I don't know why Inkscape does this sometimes. Clearly, there's white underneath here. Here's white, though. So here's black, and here's white. That's a strange anomaly in Inkscape. So the white is black and the black is white. I don't want to work. I can make them white. And there's no white colors in the game. Well, there is. So okay, no white. White is bad again. So let's make them orange. <laughs> I don't know why that's blue there. We're going to get some orange. This is like all randomly off. Or we make them gray. But again, maybe it's association. Maybe I could do it cheaply. What other way can I do this that's not the wrong colors? Um, black doesn't actually come up. I could actually make them black, but that looks a bit weird. So let's not pick one. Let's just choose a gray color here and keep them like that. And let's take those other ones and make them slightly different color as well now. Because the pink it looks a little bit off. I kind of want it just maybe a bit more undersaturated or more saturated. So it doesn't blend with the gray ones too much. So there we have a bit better lights there. So if you save this, then we can see in the program that we won't have this association with the lights at the top. This is kind of what I consider a, a net gain. There's not a lot to think about here. Perhaps it alters the design slightly, but it's more important that they, people don't make those associations, especially since it's really close to the thing they're supposed to associate with, which is this awning here, which is what the guy says. So I just changed that, so there's no chance I could do that. Now, the other one is somebody saw the horse on here, and they assumed that this was the only purpose of this was for the horse. And that's not a necessarily incorrect assumption for people to make in puzzle games, that you don't really want to use things twice. So if there is a horse on here, and you've used this once, then you don't want to use it again. 
So again, here I'm thinking I could probably get a net gain here by hiding the horse somewhere else. And so let's do that. So I could actually go down here. Let's see, there's a bunch of space here for the horse. If I remove a bunch of these letters here, whoops, just, just remove a bunch of junk here. And I could just move the horse down here. It's not going to change how it works very much. It cleans up some of the menu as well. And the menu looks a bit more chaotic. And you have a horse there now. He's not as strong. He's not white, but it's still there. It might be more obvious to see now. So when I look at this, the horse has now moved. And if you click on the horse, you get the stallion statement from that clue there. I think it's a fair change to make. I don't know if it actually makes the horse harder to see or not. That's kind of an issue. Is it harder to see? But there's also the hot dog you have to see here, so probably you can see the horse as well. Whether you'd know to click on it or not, though, I'm a bit undecided here that I actually prefer it up top. So what we can do is say, well, maybe that's not the best place to put it. Let's put it down here. And then it's even more obvious. It's not on the awning. It's not somewhere that's lost. And we have it here. And there's also happens to be an arrow pointing to it, which is kind of helpful. If you see the arrow, that you'll notice there's something pointing to it. Incidentally, when I save these files here, this isn't the exact file it loads here. It goes through a processing program here. I process them and I change the way they are just so I can use them better inside, inside the engine. So it goes through and processes everything. So that's one change to make. Another one that comes up sometimes, which I think I'm going to change, are with these two water bottles here. In the garbage, there are water bottles. Now, if the first garbage you see is here, which it is, you might associate the water bottles with these ones. Now, again, most people end up breaking that association, but it, that little frustration bit can, be, can throw you off. And do these water bottles here really add a lot to the game, or can we remove them? And so that's a check. Does it really remove them if I just remove it? Okay, so they're not actually properly grouped. So let's see if I can remove them. Okay, so I have the problem that they're actually kind of gone now. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know what to do about that. Um, so the background here, this didn't import correctly in Inkscape. So there's a bunch of weirdness in the background. But I have to clean that up anyways. Because the other thing to notice is when you do this, those ones turn blue and these ones do not. And that's because of the way that glass has been done in the grouping. So I don't know, should I leave those bottles there or not? I don't know. It's hard to say because, I mean, what happens if I get rid of them? How does it, how does it look without them? I think it's still, it's a little bit of an empty space, but I think that's okay. We don't lose a lot of the visuals. We don't lose any much. And because I've seen that association made multiple times, I think I will get rid of them. But now I have to clean up this here, whatever has happened. And this has to do with this mess here. And uh, this is just like frustrating that this imported all wrong. It's really hard to fix now. So what I need to do is fix it here. This one's the wrong shape. And these are actually just layers of the same object over and over and over again. And you can see this background one here is also sort of weird. And so what is it supposed to look like? I don't need a whole bunch of measures here. I can just probably just delete all of them. Let's just delete a whole bunch of them. Oh, that's not what I wanted to delete. Let's delete this in the background. What is this here? Where is this bit here? This somehow ended up in the hot dog. It's not supposed to be there. That blue bit there. So we're going to have some weirdness there anyways, but I'm not going to fix everything. But I could fix this. I could just say, look, this is all together here. So I have two shapes now. Um, what I could do is I can modify the one. I'm going to draw a new shape on top. Just draw this here. I'm going to take the color of this one. Get rid of the stroke. And then let's modify those bits to get it pretty close to what it should be. Not there. I gotta find like where is that shape there? 
something can be frustrating in Inkscape. Okay, so that one covers it up somewhat. So let's get out of there. Let's take these three shapes and combine them. And now we can clean them up and say, look, let's just get rid of these bits here. Anything in between there, we'll just take a simple shape. Whatever's in the middle here, get rid of that. It does weird combining sometimes, okay? We're just going to live with that. And I don't know where that's coming from. There's like another spot here. This is getting worse and worse. I just stuck with the other one and made it and just deleted the old one instead of trying to combine it. You know, that's never too late to do. Let's do it that way. So I have this new shape. It has this shape on it. Let's really just put this right to the corner. And let's make it a different color first of all. So what I'm trying to do is basically because the clip part imported somehow incorrectly or it wasn't exported correctly, I don't have the right shape. And so now I'm going to move it away, take the color of the old one, get rid of these old ones here, put this one back in place. So we have a cleaner edge here. Well, it's not perfect. And this I want to make smooth. Smooth is more important than correct. I just make that one smooth too. I don't think we have an issue with that. Why is this not smooth again? Smooth, smooth. There we go. Smooth. So we zoom out. We have that little bit there. It's part of the shadow. Now the other important bit here is I got to change this here because that's the wrong shape. So that's really weird too. That shape, but I'm just going to leave it for now. What I could really do is there's only three panes of glass. I could just put one additional pane of glass between all of it. Let's just do this. Let's just go behind all of it. And I'm going to make it a color. What color was the other stuff? Let's just do this one for now. More blue. And I'm start putting it in the background. But it's not all the way in the background, right? This is just like... How do I get this looking correctly? Let's just make it like 25%. So you have that stuff. I'm not really sure I'm happy with any of this this color. It's, this is a problem with things importing correctly. It's really hard to fix them. So what I really want is just that little bit there. So I'm going to take this, convert it to a path. Then just make it go all the way down here. Let's just get that part there. And I should be able to move that up there. And then let's make it that color. So we have some glass there. The question is, where is its depth supposed to be? What's missing in Inkscape as well is, let's say, put this behind another target. So let's put this in the front. That's obviously not the place I want it. Oops, take one ahead of that. So you have those hot dogs kind of behind glass. And this is a fairly small detail. And this should be okay. Now this is going to block the clicking of them. So what I'll do is I'll put a class on here. Class and call it inert. So nothing actually activates this. Now let's see if this actually works. The color's all wrong there, but they do actually work. does work, but the colors are wrong, and I'm not sure if I like that or not. It would remove that problem, but it won't have the same colors anymore. In particular, the bottom color is wrong, so how can I change that? This pot dog here, put it further back. What I want to do is this one here. See, it's so hard to select 
There's the one I want. That one. Did you see it? It was there for a moment. I don't know, it's just super hard to select. Let's just see if this one's okay now. Alright, I'm not really happy with any of that. So let me go through and... I'm going to see if I can fix that later. So this is a problem when you try to fix some of these things. You have all the coloring that's wrong. And here you just have weird colors because this is wrong here. So let's get rid of that. So that's like the wrong hot dog color. And this one here is wrong. But this is supposed to be the behind glass color. So like some of the stuff is just like wrong. So you can see this is actually, this is how the weird import it didn't actually do the layering, it just did the wrong color. Which is really annoying that it's not layered correctly and I don't know why it imported that way. So this gets harder and harder to fix. Let's see if I can just move some of this over here just to fix it up a little bit more. I'm not really sure what it's doing that for there. All right, let's just fix up some of those. I think that fixed up that one. So what about this one here? So this is messing with that thing right there. So this is like, whatever imported it, it cut this out instead of just applying a shape behind it. So let me just fix up this one another way. Let's just do this, just cover up the whole thing here. This is like super fine details. So it's not, it doesn't really have to be 100%. I want to get it close, but uh, let's then take this color, get rid of the stroke. So I have that. Again, the reason this is done is because the import somehow must have gone wrong, and redoing the whole scene would be really difficult right now. So there are some artifacts there, but if I reload it, it looks okay now, except for a few little bits on the top there. Is the wrong color? And that little glass bit still disappears, so where is that little glass bit? Just get rid of that glass bit. So it looks like it's more correct there now. Get rid of the glass bit. That little hot dog bit's not attached. And this top one here also has a glass bit that's sort of, wait. That's the one we fixed though. And that's okay because it's in a different color there. So we're gonna leave it. So now I have those four hot dogs. I removed the bottles, that was the main thing. Removed the bottles that were the false association. Fix that up. And I moved the horse and I changed the flags. So that should clear out several of the small issues that existed on this page because they won't come up anymore. On the menu, they also had some issues here. So this is fairly straightforward. They figured it out, so I'm, I'm reluctant to really change it. But one of these lines here is curved, much more than maybe it should be. And there are curved ones other words, but this was throwing them off. So I'm more tempted to say, let's, you know, let's not throw it off. It's not a big deal. The curved line adds a bit of flavor to it, but it's not like it's the worst thing in the world to have a straight line there. Where's my hot dog stand board? So if I go into here and I just say, well, let's get rid of this one. Let's just duplicate this one. Make it a bit higher so it's a bit variation. Whoops. So that, that gives the variation there without having that curved line. There are some ones here. This one isn't so curved. It's not so obvious there. And the rest should be there. And it's a very minor fix to avoid association that's not necessarily supposed to be there. All right, and close that one. And... Let me just check my notes, which ones I fixed. Now it's really dark in here. I'm going to turn my other light on. 
unfortunately I blink in the background now. Great. All right. So what does that fix? That's bottles. Morocco, okay. Water, hot dog. Water, hot dog place is done. Every pick water bottle. Text sound. I'm not sure about that. Hot dog, banana flag order. I got that one done. Horse and awning. I got that one done. The one thing they have is should the awning be the same length as these lights up here? Most people don't have a problem, and even they got the issue at one point, so I don't think it has to be the same. There's one, two, three, four. There's 12 up there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 here. <clears throat> Knowing that this file imported wrong, this is going to be a real pain to change. So I'm just going to leave that one and see how it works. I'm going to cross that out on my page and say, nope, that's okay. Okay, what else do we have? So that actually fixes up that. That fixes up a few things there. They fixed that one there. There's another one here that once you use the egg, you can pick it up again and again. I'm not so sure how much I can fix that. Um, so let's see. So you use the egg over here. You give the egg to this kid. And he gives you a bunny. Yay! <clears throat> uh, let's go back. And so now the egg is back because you don't have it. And you can pick up the egg again. I'm not so concerned about this. Maybe the guy produces a new egg. That's not the problem. The main issue before was now you have an extra egg in your inventory. And it's not useful though. So, well, that sucks because then people think I can use the egg again. And you, you actually can. You could actually use the egg again and get another puppet once you get rid of that one puppet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the game code and say, well, let's at least make it so you, the egg is clearly not usable. Um, the reason why I'm not changing it so it doesn't appear again is because that's a bit harder to fix because of the shortcut I used in how to, in how to show the egg. Escape directory, where are my games? Uh, Carnival index. So I have an egg. It's useful if you have the puppet rabbit or not solve rabbit board. Oh, I got this wrong. I actually tried to fix it. It's useful if you don't have the puppet rabbit or you've not solved the rabbit boy. So let's just rebuild this game. Just, I forget what the target is. Just dev game, no, build game data. I usually have this running for several days at a time, so I forget the targets and I clean up the just file. So this will rebuild this game data file. Then I can just reload this. And now, why is my egg still not useful? Okay, okay, okay. Why is it not useful? This is the question. Not has puppet bunny. I'll put rabbit. Not self. Ah, okay, now I understand. It's not an or. I got it really wrong. It's useful if they don't have the puppet rabbit. And they've not solved the rabbit boy. So if either one of those are true, then it's not useful. Okay. So if you have the rabbit, it's fine. If you've not solved the rabbit boy, it's also useful. No, actually, that's not true. I think that's okay. It leaves a gap if there's ever a break in the game that it won't show up. So now the egg is no longer useful. You can still see it, but <clears throat> you have no purpose for it. You have the bunny. And the reason you need the two conditions, because if you go into the park, and I'm just going to cheat. I'm going to use the debug user go to, well, you can't see that bit. But I just cheat. I jump in here. If I give him the bunny now, give him the bunny, The egg is still not useful, which is what we want, because you can't go get another egg. I mean, you technically can go get another egg. You can go and give it to him again. And give it to him, and you're going to get another rabbit. <laughs> um, I could actually fix that, too. It's a minor detail, but it's also already marked no longer useful. So I'm not so concerned, because the main thing is not to distract people with items that aren't useful. So I'll just leave it like that. A small minor fix. What was actually 
looking at the bottles. Okay, one of the other things that threw them off was in these bottles, they have text in the bottom of them. And it's very clearly part of the number. And this was just because of the clip art I used to show the text. What What is this? And it's just random stuff. And this throws people off because they think it's relevant to it. And I think that's clear. I'll just get rid of it because it's really not relevant to the puzzle. And there's multiple ones of those. So let's open this up. I have trash can one. I have to do something else in the trash can too, but let's just do the trash can one first. Let's just get rid of the text. I mean, it removes some of the atmosphere of the game, but it makes it clear. And since it's just a side puzzle, it's not tragic to get rid of it. And I could change it to be like less dominant, put it somewhere else, but it's not so relevant. There's enough stuff in those garbage cans already to throw you off. Let's just get rid of the obvious ones. And that one happened to be in French, so they're probably all actually in French, just only one of them had text that was relevant in French. Okay. So those are the three trash cans, so if I reload it, they're gone. Now, the other thing with this puzzle is there's no obvious reason what you have to do with it, and it's actually really quite simple. So I'm tempted because it's a bonus pencil not to fix it, but at the same time, you know, maybe, maybe there should be some indication that this is a bonus puzzle, so you don't spend too much time on it. And this I'm a, I'm a little bit uncertain of versus how to actually worry about that, or should I? If you go into the game, and if you had a ticket, I'm just gonna give myself a ticket here. Actually, I'm just going to go to the well and cheat again. On this well, you have these tokens here that close the main progress of the game. And if you get them, acquire token ticket, for example, then they show up directly on the well. And this is meant to be your main thing showing that this is what you have to do. Just point to the area as well. And so the optional ones don't have to be done. And I'm uncertain whether I need to mark the optional ones yet. Because if you have this, and it's not clear whether the optional ones should be like just a note saying, hey, if you have time, do this, or what you should do. The other one, of course, there's another optional one in the park, which is over here, which you can't get to yet. These are gonna just skip over there as well. Using my debug interface to just skip around. Oops. There's lights here too. And in this case, they associate with the bench, but I have no real clear way to indicate that these are optional. So I'm not sure what I should do here. Do I mark them as optional or just leave them based on the fact that the main well shows which ones you need, and it'll can skip over the ones you don't want, and then therefore the other puzzles are optional. So I'm going to hold off on that until I get more playtesting back, and maybe update the notes of the intro to the game saying, look, there are optional items. If you follow the main quest, it should be clear which ones are optional and which ones are not. Um, so I took the text off the bottles. That's fine. I got that one done. And... They asked first about whether these are automatically placed, and I think in the end we agreed that that's fine. You don't have to drag them from your inventory. They are here. You can't use them. They're automatically here, and I think it's okay. I could make them draggable, placeable. It's a little bit extra work, and I don't know if it buys the player anything additionally useful or not. They did make a few mistakes on here about how to match, but since they figured it out in the end how they should do it, I am inclined not to make a change yet. So we'll leave it on that. Um, got the bottle word puzzle. Okay, that was the one fixed. Okay, one thing that we did screw up, I did screw up, which should be fixed. It's over here on the sign. There's three question marks. And that's misleading. Because the price is not three long, it's four long. 
Um, so what I'll do is I'll change that as well. Where is my this is a game? I'm gonna go into the hot dog stand. Hot dog stand. And here's the price it starts at. What is the price? So I'm just gonna put a question mark there instead. Then I'll rebuild the game. Now there'll be one question mark. It looks a bit weirder, but it's a lot clearer that it doesn't have to be three or four. You have to figure it out. It's four long once you figure it out, and you can change it there. Ideally, I'd make it go away when you edit it, but that requires some sort of engine change, and I'm not sure how to do that. I would like to center or right align these things, but here's an error inside SVG in the browsers that other than left align text, they just can't do text. They just they can only do text align te left align text. Everything else starts going in weird places and there's no way I can find to fix it. So I leave everything left aligned for now. Not a lot I can do there. Okay, I did that. Now the question was about the straight lines. The straight lines, so it's not as confusing anymore. Um all right, one other thing they had was if I go to the main screen, go back to the well, I'm just gonna skip over here. I'm gonna go right to the well and go off to the ship here. <clears throat> now the ship, the puzzle here is you have to make these lights all the right color. And what threw them off is because black was in the top and black was in the bottom. And you don't actually set the colors to the black. You just leave the black ones out and combine it. It took them a while to make that one. So I could remove the black on the bottom and just say, look, you, you, these are always lit up and you have to find the right color. Or just make it never go back to black. Let you start at black and never go back. That's one option. So if I just leave these like this and then you have to turn them all on, that might be a stronger association too. It's not that hard of a puzzle either, but... Once you get down these paths, and this is one of the hard things, is once you go start going down the wrong path, it's hard to get out. So you don't want your players going down that wrong path. You, you prefer them to say like, okay, this is what it is. If I've made this one a tad easier, okay. If I've saved the frustration of a lot of players, that's even better. So do I make these not go back to black or not? Do I let them start as black and never go back? And that would be a much stronger sign if I start them with some random color and just leave the black ones out there. I think it's okay if they start as black and you have to turn them all on. So let's go look at the code that does that. That's in the ride ship code. And this code has a bit of redundancy right now because I didn't have my repetition thing at the same time when I did that. And all these lights, they start at various colors. So I can remove this and I can say, well, what did I, I'll leave that color pattern for now and I can change them all to be light black. And there's six of them. One, two, oops, that's wrong. Four, five, six. So those will start them all as black now. You won't see it when I restart the game because the moment I've modified them, the moment the game starts, it's already been there, right? So that, that wasn't a good case because I had them all black before. So if I modify it and rebuild it, you won't see it because they're not in their default state anyways. But I can go through and create a second game. And now I'm in the wrong place. But if I just jump over there, go to the well, now you'll see they all start as black. They still go back to black because that's in the allowed color list. Let's go to the color list. The color list is right somewhere here, somewhere really here. <laughs> um, where did I put it? So the next index and dot lights. Dot colors. Where did I put dot colors? Oh, it's hidden because it's lost on my screen right now. Slightly clipped there at the bottom. So there's a colors array here. If I simply take out the light black, now this means there's a lot less colored combinations. There's three colors for each one. There's six of them. Could you guess that one? I always like to do it. Could you just randomly guess it? So you have three to the six. How many combinations are there? There's 729 combinations. The likelihood that you accidentally guess this one is very low. When there was the black color, it was 4,000 combinations, which is a much, much less likely. 
I could add another color in, but that might break the association even more. Because the moment I add another color, then people are wondering, is it really associated with this up here? So, because there's only, there's three colors up there and three in the bottom. I could add another color up top as well, and that gets more to change. So I'm gonna keep it the same way here. I'm gonna start it off that way, remove it so you can't have the black. Let's rebuild that. Hello to any new viewers, welcome to the show. Feel free to ask questions on any of the channels and I'll let you know. I am working on the ride right now to, from playtesting, for people that had, uh, they had some false associations with the colors. So now when I reload this, they start as black, but they cannot go back to black. And the idea here is that once you have a color, this would actually completely fix the problem they had because they can't go black to black, so there's no way they can match black up here. They can only match the other colors, and hopefully that'll solve that problem. And I'll mark that one as fixed. Now... So the one other obvious one they had, and there's not a lot. I mean, this was actually fairly good feedback here. Most of it went fairly easy. There's a challenging one here, though, I don't know what to do with. If you click on the horse, you acquire the item. If you click on the horse again, it says you picked up the item again. Now, every player doing this at the same time, everybody's going to say they picked up these items and you can get all these messages. But this is actually written on the thing. This is like written on the ship, of course. You don't really pick it up and lose it. it it's just sort of there. It's scribbled on there. It's like, you know, you have graffiti on there. So I'm not sure what to do with that. I'd prefer to kind of leave them there, that you go here and you see it again. But they pick them up a lot. Like People pick at random, and I don't know if that's a problem. Um, nobody's... I mean, there's been a few complaints about it, but I'm not clear on how to fix this. I don't want to make the horse go away because it's not like picking up an item in the trash. The trash has other items you can't pick up. So I don't know what to do with that yet. I'm undecided <clears throat> whether it should be faded out because then if it's faded out, you're going to wonder what changed about it. And if you're looking for the last one, the one reason to get rid of those, if you're looking for the seventh one, you're kind of wondering um, which one did not click yet. Because this is SVG in a browser, I have limited options to change the way that looks. And so it's a lot of work, and fundamentally so far, it's not something people have tripped up on too much. So I'm inclined not to change it now and to wait for more feedback about that and two people complain about that more. I'll see on the other playtesting. The music's definitely quieter. A uh, small thing they did as well is when there's the darts there. I'll just skip there to the darts, dart game. In the darts, you try to pick up the darts, and it just says poke. You don't directly pick them up. You just throw them. You just, you just pop something, and everybody's figured that out, so I'm just going to leave it that way. I just say, look, it's just fine. Everything leaves it that way. Incidentally, this screen took a lot of work to fix. This has already been fixed a lot. Um, the last play testers actually went through this very cleanly, they figured out very quickly, as opposed to the three before that had significant difficulties making the correct associations on this page. And so what I did is I made these things rotate instead of being laid out in a grid. Because the typical thing in a grid is they thought there's an order in a grid, and there is not. You can click any one, and most people, fo they focused on the middle ones, and then found the yellow one here. And they got it, so I'm inclined to just leave this one exactly as it is for right now and not change anything about that. The fact that they tried to pick up a dart, it's actually hard to get these in the tab anyways. It just says poke and nothing happens, and I think that's okay. One other thing that came up was an actual defect, and I'm gonna just acquire the item for what it is. I'm gonna acquire the puzzle box. So they get the puzzle box at some point in the game, and one of the players could not see these texts up here. And this, this is really bothersome to me. It's not clear why they couldn't see it. And this was in Chrome, like a newest version of Chrome on Windows. And I'm going to have to test this one here as well. Let's, I can, I'm, don't have to go far in the game. And these arrows are actually up there as well. They're a bit harder to see, but it's not so relevant which one it is. It's just that you have the dividers there. And I don't know what would have to happen that you don't see these. 
because if you're seeing the emojis in the game, it means your fonts are installed correctly in your system. And these ones here, I really don't know what font it is. So I'm going to wait and see what happens with that. But this puzzle basically can't be solved without really seeing that association, especially the one in the middle. I mean, the left, right, blue, red is the wrong symbol. Um, let me bring up exactly what they saw on it again. I put this in my root, my long temp folder. Escape. Screenshot. So this is what they saw. They saw the typical boxes of unidentified items. And I'm not sure how I fixed that because these are standard arrows. These have been in Unicode for so long, and this implies something more fundamental. And I'd really like to know what the platform setup was or how I can detect that. Um, I'm going to put a big question mark on that. It's something I should fix. I'm just not sure how to fix it. So I'm going to leave it for now. Okay, one more thing they had on the final screen. Let's go away from this. On the final screen of the game, I'm going to skip my way back there again. Well, I'm going to go right to the bottom, well bottom. Oh, I can't. I'm on the wrong item. Let's go to the well. When you're at the well bottom, and when you solve the final puzzle, which actually you could solve right at the beginning, you get lucky here, but again, what would be the chance of getting lucky? There's a... I actually think you have to, you have to hit six buttons, seven buttons. And because they're in order, you basically have, after your first button, you have five options, five to the sixth then. So with that many options, it's highly unlikely you're going to click these accidentally in the right order, so I don't have to worry about that. But when you do click them, there's not a strong feedback that something has happened. It shows the text at the top, which people just don't read. Um, I don't know what the reason for that is. <laughs> I think it's because in escape rooms, if you're used to escape rooms, you don't have text popping up. But that makes it actually super sort of frustrating when people are playing this, that they don't read the text at the top of the game. And it does have feedback, but the feedback isn't strong. And one of the players correctly noted that every time they solve a puzzle on the rest of the game, they got something for it. Something happened. So logically, in this one, it should be solved. You should get feedback as well. <clears throat> um, so the final... So the question is, what type of feedback do I do? Ideally, when you finish the puzzle, you go back here and the thing is solved. And this rock comes up and it's solved. And let me check what the thing is. So this is the final puzzle there. And so you see, you press the final button if you feel rumbling. What was that? This is fine to stay here. And now you solve goodwill tokens. And it's done. And you just sit here. Nothing happens. Because people don't read a lot, they may not see that. They saw the solve tokens, but then it's not clear that they go back here. They would eventually find it to go back out here. But it'd be clear if it jumped out here automatically. One of the issues with this for me fixing this is that I don't... You're right. The engine can kind of do it and kind of not. When you solve the puzzle, I can immediately throw it out here, but then the notices are going to come on this screen. And that may be better than just being stuck on that screen, but if the last thing you do is you suddenly go out here, and then the notices here come out here, preferably you'd come out with the screen later. And that type of sequencing I can't do. More importantly, I have no way at the moment to send all players back to the screen. It would just be the one player who got the notice. So I'm fundamentally missing a way to actually solve this level of interaction. And so it's probably the main reason it hasn't been fixed yet because it's a challenge. that I have a challenge, and I have to change the engine. I have to provide some sort of support. I'm not which one I would do. I don't have that type of scripted support in the environment yet. I can do timelines, so I can play a timeline that applies to a single player. And I don't have timelines that can apply to multiple players. And, and that's because they may not be on the screen, and that's what makes it even more challenging. When somebody's down here, solving this and they solve it, the other player may be way over here. And so the question is, should they even go to the well or what should happen? They'll see the text, and that's why it's left at text. But one of the players, they'll see more. 
And so I don't know. I should fix it for at least the one player so at least they notice. And what would be good then is that when you go back here, you end up on this screen and this thing shakes a bit. And that makes it super obvious that something has happened. I would love to have an animation on that to get some bit more. But this is going to take a little bit more of a effort on the engine end. And at this point into the development, this, I'm not positive I want to make that level of change to the engine. Because the other play testers so far, although they said, what was it, what happened, it kind of fit with the wording of what was that. And they looked around, and then they saw the keys like, ah, there's another key, and they went in there. So it's not tragic right now. And if I see an easy way to do it, I will. I could make it easily for the one player to go back to this screen and then get the text on this screen. That's an option. And, you know, why don't, yeah, I'm wondering if I should just do that. Just make them go back to that screen. Let's go to the well. Well, that's an option there. So you see right here at the bottom, <clears throat> I have a notice, a notice, and solve well buttons. Good well tokens. These are three notices that end up, notice and a notice, and then solve ends up creating a notice for the user. And the notices are queued for the user, but the actual actions are not. These actions are all executed immediately, all together. And this will send to all players, and it'll batch them up. So what I'm really missing is a way to say, once you solve this one, to do something else. What I can do here is I can say, user go to well. And I think that's what I do, title, user go to well. So when they do solve this one, they'll go back to well, then get those things. And that might be good enough. So let's do this. Let's go right here. And I'm going to go right to the well again. And solve the puzzle right at the end. Oh, I have to rebuild the game. So I haven't hit the last button yet, so I can reload. And it keeps the game state. Three reloads and everything. Now, I go back to the well, feel a rumbling. What was that? And hopefully they're in the screen that hit. So maybe that's a slight bit of an improvement. It's not perfect, but it's what I can do now. Changes. It's also not significantly blocking. So I'm going to do that for the one player. Other players are going to stick there. And we have to hope they're communicating a little bit for that. Okay. I think that's all I wanted to look at today. I wanted to go through those few fixes, show some of it done. If I fix this association thing, I will do another episode showing how I combine those things and get the so some of the high-level integration to show that type of scripting. I take one more thing of the notes to see if there's anything I missed in that screen. Um, there's some preparation I have to do. The one thing was so that people are aware that you can solve puzzles in parallel because they were here and people jumped around. And if you're not communicating, well, not not saying you're communicating. If you're all playing on your own, you may not see what's going on. I've intentionally left it this way, that if you want to team work together, you can. If you want to work in parallel, you can't. But I should work on the startup screen then for that. So the startup basically points out the most vital things, and I'll clean up that startup text and show what happens with that. Just clearly say it's like, look, it's a game that can be solved in parallel. If you're new to this type of thing, you should probably work together. You can share the screen, or you can just be on the same screen, and just to communicate for that. All right. Thank you for watching, and subscribe to any one of the places where I'm streaming at. That I think it's Twitch or YouTube and a couple other ones. I think Periscope and DLive right now. I'm just testing those ones out. So if there's any activity, I'll keep going. And if you have any questions, you can ask me over on Twitter and or probably in any of these chat channels or any of the ones that have messages, and I'll probably be able to see it. And they'll get back to you. And you want to see covered in the show, then I'll do that. I'm also thinking about streaming some game playing, just me playing games. And I might do that later this evening. I'll look at puzzle games and play them. But I'm undecided on that. But hopefully, I'll do that. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.